So I guess we're chasing a motorcyclist now. As you can see. Yep, so that's me in a police car chase in the most deadliest country on earth. And with 45,000 deaths every year, Brazil has the most murders in the world, twice as much as the US. Four out of every 10 people murder are Brazilian youth. And at a time where cops are demonized in the media around the world, we decided to spend 24 hours with a police unit here to understand. Why would anyone in their right mind want to be a cop here? The victim was there with a... What are the realities and what does it take to survive? The guy was armed. They saw him reaching towards his... Are you serious? Belt. Yes. And are these cops really making a difference or are they part of the problem? Go, but one thing I learned is that things happen on an instant here. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Holy Yo, this is like straight out of a movie scene, I swear to God. So we'll come back to our patrol around the three different favelas, but how did we even get their trust and approval? Because obviously they don't just let anyone do this. Because this specific unit deals with the worst of human atrocities from murders, grapes, and kidnaps in Sao Paulo favelas. How common are these kidnappings? Very common. Next one that we're going to is the most dangerous, you said? Yeah. And so we clearly had to convince some of our intentions that in that we weren't gonna just f around. Our goal wasn't to expose nor glorify these cops, but instead to show the realities of their work in one of the most truly dangerous cities in the world. And first we had to get approval from their head head boss who sent his captain and his tenant that runs this 18th battalion. So we got up, shook hands, met and toured with the captain and the tenant was actually supposed to come but was late, but we'll get to why in just a sec. I'm going to show them here, reserva de armas. Não são granadas ofensivas, elas são granadas que elas diminuem a condição combativa das outras pessoas. Então são granadas que fazem barulho e emitem luz. E o local que a gente chama de guarda preso, né, que é onde os criminosos acabam aí permanecendo. Oh, you put criminals in here? Yes. yes. Oh, yes, because usually they put them in the back seat, but they don't do that here? No, no, no. <laughs> Is it cool if I uh, go in here? <laughs> So apparently three people can fit in here and, and, and here in Brazil they actually put all the criminals in the trunk and not in the back seat. Decent amount of space. And after they showed us around and were clear in our intentions, we had one final test. And it was a pull-up competition. Alright, what do you guys what do you guys think I'm gonna get? Let me know in the comments before you watch. I would bet seven. So, oh he bet seven. Okay. How, how many do you think how many do you think he's gonna do? Eleven. Eleven? Okay. Eleven. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. All right, I got 16. How many did you get? One specific. 20? 16 as well. Oh, what? Okay, 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 so cool. You're, you're tight. We gained the captain's trust and we were given the approval, but remember earlier how I said that the tenant was supposed to come and meet us? Well, apparently here's why he couldn't. While coming here, he got involved in a currency. Uh, which was resistance followed by death. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna play it cool so I don't look like a pussy in front of the captain. Okay, cool. So obviously when a regular day in the offense could be life or death, we were starting to get a better idea of their realities. We still had no idea what we were getting ourselves into, but clearly it wasn't gonna be all sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> Merch is officially out. Go to shop.exploretheunfamiliar.com to get our logo, tees, and hoodies, as well as our limited edition designs for this season. Run it up. So finally, this is Tenant Mendoza, and he's gonna show us exactly what a day in the life of a military police looks like. We are a special police with a special police officers and special uh, police cars. It's all bulletproof, I'm guessing. No. So it's not bulletproof? No, it's not bulletproof. Teacher, right? <laughs> yeah. So what happens if we get shot at? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a fusil, 5.56 caliber. Like a shotgun, caliber 12. We have another fusil. Mm -hmm. How often do you have to use that gun? Is it rare or quite often? Rare, but uh, we did use. 
This is a uh, short. This is from shotgun? Yeah, oh. from shotgun. Yes, two. It's a uh, oh, rock. Wow. Do you always like fear for your life whenever you go out in these Yeah, missions? we have fear because we are humans. No? This job is not a is not a job really. Right. This is a uh, vocation. And so that was interesting. And remember that vocation, not a job. And you'll see that throughout the video. But anyways, it was time to start the day. And just like they do before every shift, they started with a group workout. In our unit, you don't have fat guys. Yeah. It's so, all like American cops. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of American really? cops. Yeah. American cops. Is uh, yeah. Fat. yeah. You guys hit everything. You guys don't skip leg day or anything like no, that. No, no, we don't skip leg day. Look at that. Look at that. We don't skip leg day. No skip leg day. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. no. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's fucking hard so far. Just been like no rest, like going back and back at it. But the best thing about these sorts of environments when you're working around a bunch of people, you can't bitch out. So I feel like I'm pushing myself in like the right way. All right, Andre, let's get it. Let's get it, Andre. And after a nice pump, I was curious on where we were gonna go for a patrol. This is uh, our classroom. Here we we do the theoretical instructions. So what's what's today's mission looking like? Do we have any special uh, missions that we're gonna do when we go out? So we have uh, Iraqi, Iraq. So that's the favela we're going to today. Yeah. Okay. Iraq. We're going to Iraq. Damasceno. How many people live in each of these favelas? Maybe here in Iraq, it's not so much, maybe 5,000. Okay. But here is almost like a city. Damasceno, maybe 35,000. 35,000 wow. people. So for those who don't know, Brazilian favelas are essentially slums, and it's where many of the drug activity and gang operations are run from in Brazil. And as you'll see, this unit specifically patrols some of the biggest slums in Sao Paulo to fight this sort of crime. So just like what happened yesterday with Tena Mendoza, conflict can really happen at any time. And so it was important that they not only knew how to use their gun, but their fists. <laughs> Box is hard, man. We need to to be ready for all the situations in the street, you know? What's the most common like martial arts? Does it usually end up on the ground? Like so jujitsu? Jujitsu. I see. Yeah. We need to know how to immobilize some, some guy fastly. We don't have time. Right. In our work, we don't have time. Maybe we have uh, five seconds to to make a decision. The part most important here is all of our, uh, our actions is based on training. Mm. Training, training, and training. So all of uh, It's all our, automatic at this point, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, can we do one where we, I like resist the rest and then they do it like into real life? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to try and resist. Yeah, gonna... <laughs> okay, come on. Okay. No. Sir, put your hands. Get the f*** away head. from me. Sir, put Get the f*** away there. from me. Sir, put your hands away from me. Give me your arm. Give your arm. Your arm. Another arm. Another arm. Give me your arm. And I was starting to see exactly why they call it a vocation and not a job. Holy oh, <laughs> It was like I'll say you up one second and then. How do you feel now? Good. Good. This is a Brazilian yes, police. Yes, yeah, yes. we need more. I'll never disobey the Brazilian police. How did I rank like out of all the people that you've arrested? Was I was that a difficult <laughs> challenge or too easy? Medium, medium. <laughs> medium, okay, okay. No, no, he said it was very light. Yeah, he said he said it was very light. <laughs> <laughs> medium, medium. He said right. no resistance. It's crazy how they haven't even started their day out. I'm already like toast. This is like this is like my workout for like the day. Look at that. Desejo realizado. Okay. It's like we're uh, irmãos. Irmãos. <laughs> and from working out to having lunch, they spend a lot of time together. So no surprise that they have nicknames for each other. They all have nicknames. You're a big mouse. Big mouse. Big mouse. Big Peter. Big Peter. Monkey. <laughs> His nickname's monkey. Yeah, that's monkey. Monkey. <laughs> Super skinny. Super skinny. <laughs> and even I got a new nickname. And I'm chicken. Yes. 
<laughs> and so it's all shits and giggles now, which almost made me forget how deadly these dudes are and the job that they do every day. Like this was one of the jobs that Tenen Mendoza dealt with just a few months ago. Another fellow American from Texas was kidnapped and held hostage by gang members for 15 hours at gunpoint. Tenen Mendoza and the unit found them tied up in a white van in one of the favelas that we will be going to. But as you can see, things didn't end up so well for the gang members. Is that you? Yeah, an American guy is on the left. The guy run for us and, uh, and we burst it. Burst it him. Wow. So call it calling my nerves or what? Am I not going to accept a post meal SIG? But it also gave me time to get to know the other members of the unit and their experiences just before we were about to head out. Did you guys always want to be police? Like since you were like a kid or? Yeah, we born into this, door, this job. So you think not everyone can become a cop? The thing most, most important. important is the vocation. Yeah, I keep hearing that. Everybody says yes, it's a yes, vocation, yes. not like a job. It's a vocation. Not a job. We do because we like. I see. Do you have to be kind of crazy to do this job? Totally. <laughs> totally. You think so too? Yeah. What do you think is the hardest part about your job besides obviously like the danger aspect about it? Family things. Family things. Family? Worrying about family? Someone you arrest, some guy you kill, the partner see you in the streets and you organize. Mm. It's dangerous. So like, does it impact your personal life? Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's hard, but here we, we are a family. And so even with all the sacrifices and the fact that you have to be a crazy motherfucker to do this, I was starting to better understand why exactly they call it a vocation and not a job. So it was time to get strapped. You know, in America, they give uh, each one of us uh, this as soon as we turn 18. First, they give. Welcome to America, welcome to Dolphin. You live in Texas, no? Yeah, yeah. Like in Texas, Texas if you wanted to buy a gun, it could take like, like one hour. From, uh, Very uh, easy. No, not yet. Not yet? Not yet. It's a That's... gift for you. Oh. Oh, I'm joking. <laughs> and so it was time, but before we left, there was one last thing to keep in mind for good luck. Okay, so we're about to ride out. And before we ride out, we have to ride. What do we have to yell? What do we have to yell out? That's cool. That's cool. It's for like good vibes. Okay. So, yeah. Let's go! Nice, nice. Nice work, nice work. Nice. nice work, God bless us. So I thought they were doing this because they wanted to feed us some fire content, but turns out they actually do this to warm up the tires and suspension because as you'll see later on, you for sure need the car to be able to do its thing. Where, where are we going first? We are going first to Iraqi. Okay, so the first step is uh, Iraqi. Yeah. It's where they start their patrol. It's not that does this feel like a Call of Duty mission? It feels like a Call of Duty cutscene. I swear there was actually like a Call of Duty mission like this. So what kind of signs are you looking for as you're patrolling? Some drug dealers, people with guns, people stealing. We are going to favela now. Okay. Yeah, I could not believe it, but here we were, trolling the streets of the most murderous country in the world, and soon enough, uh, I could see exactly why. So the, the guy was armed, like the guy. Oh, he was. They saw him uh, reaching towards his. Are you his serious? Belt. Yes. <laughs> Make him move. Holy. <laughs> but ultimately, they ended up bailing because he was on his motorcycle. Obviously, the streets and the favelas are super narrow, as you'll see. So, at any moment, anything can happen. Okay, so we're refilling the tank right now, and everyone's uh, getting out to uh, make sure that we're all going to be okay. Make serious. Yeah. Make serious. So they're essentially surrounding the perimeter, so he's not going to get ambushed as he's filling it up. Okay, we're going to be getting out right clear. now. Clear. All clear. 
it's part of our job always driving with the full tank police car with a full tank okay because you never know you might have to go chase right yeah exactly so this part of teaching that stay outside of the the store is responsible to the security to uh, make sure they're safe yeah i see have you had instances like during this where things started happening where like drug leaders started attacking you ja, ja. É, aqui tem muito um conjunto de moto roubada, elas costumam passar num bonde assim de 20, 30, às vezes 50 motos. E a gente, já aconteceu de a gente estar tá aqui mesmo e as motos passarem. And look, if I'm gonna be real, I wasn't trying to show it, but god damn, I was nervous as fuck here. Especially with what just happened just a few minutes ago. And not to mention the fact that we're in a goddamn favela. Dude, if like, if like people actually just start shooting though, like we're so powerless right now. Yeah, I, have, I have a water bottle to defend myself. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I have my body bodysuit. That's not gonna do shit. But turns out, this ain't even the favelas. This is a good part. <laughs> Wait, this is a good part? <laughs> we haven't even arrived to the favela. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. This is a good part. Uh, <laughs> this place is good. This is yeah. the Hamptons of the, of the favelas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a Hamptons. Next is the Park Taipas. When I was found uh, another American. Oh, this is where you found that American that was yeah. kidnapped. Yeah. So I think we're finally uh, arrived at the favelas. Super tense right now. It's like there's like a a lot of anticipation on like what's gonna happen. Isn't it kind of crazy how this is just like normal shit for them? Well, <laughs> Captain Bourdain, in our last conversation with him, he said, when you enter the favela, your heart starts to pound. Like, yeah, I guess it never goes away, right? So cool. Holy shit, they're making an arrest right now? Olha pra frente. Olha pra frente. Eu não, não, não perguntei nada pra você. Eu estou esperando por eles. Você não está aqui? O meu nome dele é o 46. Eles checam toda a informação sobre os homens para ver. Um deles foi apenas released, o outro foi apenas released também. Parece tudo bem. Então... Apparently that's a tablet that you use to be able to look at people's information. He's able to identify people in like the big, I guess, national database. It's definitely a bigger favela than the, the one that we were previously. Way more dense, way more people, way, it's way more activity. Is it here because it's a more isolated place? They they usually bring people that were kidnapped to keep them locked in here. Okay, we just kind of randomly stopped and uh, told us to get out. So some shit's about to happen. That place is the exactly place uh, where I found the another American. Just right here. Wow. In the van. This favela is called Parque Taipas. Parque Taipas. Oi. We got to the top of our first favela and now it's time to go from house to house. It is deixa muita carga roubada aqui também. I see. O pique. Vai na reta guarda deles. Nossa, quebrada tá apavorada hoje, hein? They are looking because it's hard. It's, it's rarely, it's rare to see a beautiful people, beautiful man in Peter. <laughs> they're talking. To, they're talking to you, Andre. Okay. No. But. Ah, in cima, na van. Ah, tá. 
I'm gonna show to you a hostage place. Yeah, a hostage, hostage place? That was used by the criminals to bring the hostage to that house. I'm gonna show you. Come on. Look. Wow. So this is where they put all the hostages? Yeah. The, oh, shit. The, the, the victim waiting here with a Mahada. So is it going to be like rival, rival gangs? No, no, like, no. Or... It's like a, a people that they want to rescue money, right? Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. So Americans like me. Yeah, right there. <laughs> But not not only Americans, Americans, Brazilian, everyone. Don't matter. When we come into this door, the victim was there in the sofa with her hands like that and feet like like that, with a, a stripe. The kidnapper was running for that door. How common are these kidnappings? Very common. Very common here in this place and in this area. The view is insane. Yeah. All of this is our area. All this. Yeah, all this. That was crazy just seeing an area where a bunch of people just get kidnapped and hell for ransom. This whole like time, I don't know, like you guys are seeing this, but it just feels so tense. Hopefully it like conveys just kind of like what I'm feeling at the moment too. There's a lot of sequestro here, there's a lot of kidnaps here and a lot of uh, shootings. Mm. It's like so dangerous, but so beautiful. It's like the most dangerous and most beautiful view. Yeah. Come on. They're gonna take us to a more back, back on the road. No, back a uh, more crazier place. Even more crazy? Yeah. How do you think about that after these two stops so far? It's dangerous for them and it's dangerous for the people who live in the favela. Um, but it's it's necessary, like people who live in the favela they don't have a choice. Like right. most of them they, they need to come here because of the living cost and they have they, they didn't choose to live in the favela and these guys like they need to do their job like because otherwise favelas become completely law lawless yeah. so it's a necessary job and now we were approaching our second favela and what they said was was an even more dangerous one oh we're going down some very steep hills right now he said that Right now, like all the watchers already warned the drug lords that we are in here. So they all hide, they hide the drug selling points and they wait until we, until we leave. To... These houses are, I guess, typically high areas for drug activity. As we saw some of the sheds, that's where they used to store a lot of the drugs. It really is like a maze in here. A bunch of houses stacked on top of each other. So we're kind of just stopped here and top of the stairs. Are you tired? Huh? Tired? No, I'm not tired, man. It's impossible to be tired in this situation. <laughs> Are you? No. <laughs> Is this just like a regular, what's today, a Sunday for you? Yeah, yeah. it's a normal Sunday. Normal Sunday? Is this like a chill Sunday? Or? Yeah, a chill yeah. Sunday. <laughs> Sunday, bloody Sunday. <laughs> And just as we were walking back to the car to head to the next location, we see someone who might be a suspect. So I guess he's performing a search right now. And when he says that in a hostile location like this, they perform uh, it yeah. to anyone. So I guess to any guy. Yeah. Oh, he's been arrested before? We asked him to show, show off your tattoos so you can you can know more about the, mm. the person. Okay. 
Okay. And one thing we've noticed is that, yeah, people people are either like very hostile or very polite towards like the police, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, I'm sure a lot of it is that you know they've like, seen many friends, family, all that like being locked up. But then also like you know we've kind of just been rummaging through their property, telling people to put their hands up, right? I mean, obviously there's there's a lot of reasons for that. But I can see why the the frustrations for like the locals too, because I'm sure this is a weekly. You know, maybe even daily thing of, of police coming here. So it's like this this patrol today has it been more chill, or is there usually more action? How do you how does it usually go? Uh, it, it's chilly because uh, the hour it's early, uh, but by the night the, the the streets come more more, more dangerous. dangerous. Just like we said early, uh, the platoon is a family. Mm. I guess in a way you see your platoon more than probably your family, right? Yeah. Do you have a wife and kids? I have a wife. I see. He, he's a police officer too. She's oh. a police officer too? Yeah. And what does she do? Like, uh, she is in the streets or like... In the streets. Uh, she's military police too? Yeah. Okay. After visiting the two favelas, look, it was tense and I was anxious, but to be honest, there wasn't anything like too crazy. But was that going to be different in this final favela? I guess that seems to be the case. Next one that we're going to is the most dangerous, you said? Yeah, most dangerous What's it called? favela. It's called it Cappadocia, like a city in Turkey, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're saying that a lot of people there are holding big guns and Big everything. guns and the drug traffic there is really hard. <laughs> about to go to, I guess, the most dangerous of the favelas yeah. that we went to. We thought that we were safe. Like, we yeah, thought, we thought this was already dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're just getting started. And oh boy, was I right. <laughs> As we were entering into this next favela here, uh, it's weird. A couple people just started like clapping. I think they were very happy to see the police here. So it's definitely a different reception than some of the reception that we've been getting. When we start hearing loud ass noises out of nowhere, you know some shit's about to go down. Okay, so we see essentially three guys with hands behind their back. Right now they're interrogating some of the suspects, probably like stolen motorcycle or something like this. And what we notice is that they they talk to them a bit rude. Yeah, they get like all in their faces. They, I don't know if you guys yeah. can see it, but... Intimidating. I think yeah. it's more like to intimidate them because if you're actually talking to a gangster and you talk soft with them, they don't they'll give a shit. They, all over you. they won't respect yeah. you. So in a way, you they end up talking like this to everyone because they don't know who is not a, yeah. a criminal or who it is. So in a way, maybe they'll respond better too if you are intimidating. Exactly. Right? So they were saying that they they were riding motorcycles without license plate. Oh, I see. So it could be a stolen motorcycle, but they checked and it seems to be okay. Like it's not a stolen motorcycle. So after checking on the suspects and it seems like they were all good, we got deeper into the favela and you started to see a different reaction by the locals. You can see, yeah, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a uh, rope. They're they're roping it off. Go ahead. Yeah, this area definitely seems more intense. People are mean mugging here. They blocked the street with yeah, I saw that. Okay, so I guess we're chasing a motorcyclist now. As you can see. He got through. Like straight out of a movie scene, I swear to God. Oh. 
mão, levanta a mão, levanta a mão. Errou já? Errou já? Era geral. Era geral. Huh? Roubado. It's a stolen motorcycle. Stolen, stolen motorcycle. Okay, so they were able to find that this was a stolen motorcycle. So this is the stolen motorcycle that they were able to identify, and I guess this guy is going to get arrested. So our tenant is going to conduct the motorcycle to the unit. <laughs> <laughs> so I think now is a good moment to explain that Brazil actually has three types of police. The military police, which we've been touring around with. And if you subscribe to the channel, you'll see a part two soon of our day with the civil and scientific police who are like the detectives and crime scene investigators of police in Brazil. And the station that we just arrived at is the civil police station, and it's now up to them to handle and process the arrest of this guy. This is the civil police. Yeah. And they're about to process the arrest. Is yes. that correct? Police civil is gonna investigate and make the judicial process. So all the documents of the civil police will go to court to be analyzed, oh, and also their deposition, they're gonna be heard in the civil police right now. And if the judge thinks, they did the right thing by arresting this guy. They're gonna convert this prison into a preventive arrest and this guy's gonna be in jail until his process and justice finishes. Wow. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Oh, you know, he, he, was, he used to be a lawyer. He was, he's a lawyer. Yeah, he's a yeah, lawyer. yeah, I was a lawyer. Yeah. I'm not anymore. You used like, to. Holy shit, he still has it. <laughs> I can't believe you still have this. Yeah. I thought it would have been gone. Sorry. You'll never forget this day, guys. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Every day is like today. This is just a regular Sunday, huh? <laughs> but you said that there's no increase in pay for taking more of a dangerous battalion? No. No? no. It's really the vocation, like the... Yeah. the... May I ask how much you guys may, uh, get paid per month? Four to six thousand. Yeah, uh, high, four to six thousand ice. It's around like twelve hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because the payment is about the, the military rank. It's not about the job. Because after we've seen the danger and not to mention the low pay, this job or vocation is definitely not for anyone. So while they were finishing processing the arrest, it made me think back to the conversation that we had with the captain before the patrol because it's starting to make a lot more sense now. E, e atualmente está se tornando mais comum isso. Mesmo com o crime diminuindo, de certa forma, com a tendência de diminuir. Eu, eu acredito que o crime ele sempre vai existir. Por mais que a gente consiga diminuir os valores, o crime vai existir. Mas o, o que eu acabo percebendo é que o, o acesso às redes sociais fazem com que as pessoas tomem mais conhecimento do que acontece. Antigamente, a gente não sabia que estava tendo crime. Então você não ficou com medo. Quanto mais isso fica se proliferando, fica passando, aumentando, a pessoa começa a ter mais medo porque ela começa a tomar conhecimento do que está acontecendo. A família tem um papel fundamental. Ela, só que ela, ela nunca mostra o lado bom, o ladrão preso. Ela mostra sempre uma, um fato que acaba acontecendo. Você tem maus jornalistas, você tem maus professores, tem maus policiais que acabam cometendo erros. Mas não é o normal. And it's true. Because if you take a hundred people of any group, there's almost a hundred percent certainty that if you're gonna be complete f***ing idiots, and in the case of a hundred police, absolutely there's gonna be a few that are gonna be bad, corrupt people. But as we heard over and over again with this specific unit that it's a vocation and not a job, I don't think corrupt cops are gonna be the ones that'll be saying that. But with corruption being a reality of police force around the world, I did want to ask. What's been interesting, especially in the US, is like uh, ever since 2019, 2020, there's been the uh, George Floyd uh, protests and the BLM protests. And I think that really kind of stayed a lot of people's view and perception of police in the United States. Has there been any kind of like repercussions that have been, uh, 
actually has in a way exported over to Brazil as well. É, infelizmente, eu, eu acabo percebendo que existe sim uma, uma visão da, da mídia falando que a polícia ela, ela atua mais contra o jovem pobre negro. A mídia ela, ela leva para esse, esse caminho. Só que eles esquecem da nossa realidade brasileira, que nosso povo, a miscigenação brasileira, existe muito mais negro junto, bem dentro da própria corporação. Então, 50% do meu efetivo também é negro. Então, eu não busco abordar o negro. Eu busco abordar as atividades criminais naquela região. Muitas vezes eles levam para o lado do racismo, eles levam para o lado da, da... Eles forçam uma barra. And I think the best representation of his message and the investigation in this video is this controversial 2007 Brazilian movie about cops. Just like the battalion we saw in this video, the film Elite Squad shows a dark and realistic portrayal of the military police and not only does it show the struggles with drug dealers and gangs and favelas, but also the ethical dilemmas and corruption by the officers. And I think it's fair to say that this nuanced approach by the director was achieved and reflected in the film's reception by viewers and even politics at large. In Elite Squad, I think you have a good dramaturgy, but on top of the film you have reality. Some viewers saw the realistic and brutal actions by police as a necessary response to crime and even gained admiration for the police as heroes, while others criticized the film for glorifying violence and perpetuating negative stereotypes about favela residents. And the film even had an impact on public discourse with some politicians using the movie's themes to justify tougher law enforcement policies, while others saw it as an opportunity to push for social reforms to address underlying issues like poverty and inequality that led people to commit these crimes in the first place. And if I've learned anything with my mission to explore the unfamiliar is that there's two sides to every story or issue and oftentimes truth is in the middle. So one thing I want to make clear also is that this isn't like some glorification of cops too, right? That's not what we're trying to do. What we're also just trying to provide is another perspective that I feel like over recent years we haven't really seen. I feel like cops these days have been demonized. Whether this changed your view on cops or whether you, they made you hate them more, one thing you gotta remember is that when shit goes wrong, who are you calling? It's also exciting news as the merch is finally out. So you'll be able to buy it in my link in the description, or if you prefer something free, then sign up for my free weekly newsletter where we cut through the noise of news and give you the one big story that you care about. And one last plug, follow me on Instagram, Twitter to find more behind the scenes and more so my thoughts around these different types of things. But again, if you don't care about all that and you just wanna binge more content, then here's a good one here.